my plan was simple. I was going to kayak down the west coast of Scotland and climb and rose from sea level. But I had a more abstract goal too. I'd grown up admiring Britain's many adventurers and explorers. I wanted to be like them, and having just become a father, this felt like my last chance to become an adventurer. The first few strokes of the adventure came as a relief. It surprised me. With all the risk and the effort to come, I expected this to be the moment of peak nerves. But although what we were doing might be tough, it was ultimately simple, and that simplicity came as a wave of relief. We didn't have far to go that night, just from the village of Plockton to a bothy on the Applecross Peninsula. But we were starting late so we knew it would get dark soon and we were keen to get moving. It soon got dark. We explored the peninsula and the dying light and went into some of the pitch black caves. Finally, we arrived at the Bothy at the dead of night. Day two was the longest day in the kayak and we had to start early to make sure we got between sky and the mainland before the tide turned after lunch. James, my old pal from school, was joining me for the first five days, including the first Monroe hike, which is a Scottish mountain over 3,000 foot. He'd then leave me and I'd kayak for two days by myself until my friend Jack joined for the final week. After lunch we still had 15 kilometres to go. We were entering Loch Huron with grand mountains all around us. I started to notice my kayak was turning into the wind. On closer inspection my skeg had gone. It's just a small bit of plastic that hangs down the back of your boat to keep it going straight. It's the kind of gear you don't realise how important it is until it's gone and it was a nightmare to lose it this early in the trip. Without a skeg I was having to pull hard on one side just to go in the right direction. I felt more and more lopsided as the hours passed. It filled me with aches on a day that would have been tough anyway and it was a relief to finally make land. A 
hard work wasn't over, we had to haul our kayaks up a river to a boffy we planned to stay in. When we got there, someone had taken over the room and said he didn't want us staying there due to Covid. We were livid. If he was worried about Covid, it should have been his responsibility to bring a tent, not ours. We thought of many witty responses hours later from our camp. In the meantime, the midges were unbearable. We decided to hike back down the coast to escape them. It made for another late night finish. Day three was the first hike up on Monroe. We were going to follow a beautiful ridgeline up to the summit of Lave Bien. God's law, just as we reached the summit, the clouds set in and robbed us of the view. But after a quick hug, we decided to follow a different ridge line back down to our kayaks. Back at our kayaks, the midges were still horrendous, so we decided to drag our kayaks back down the river, which was the last thing we wanted to do after a mammoth hike, and find a more exposed camping spot that was hopefully away from the plagues of the bugs. Our efforts were rewarded with a peaceful night on the loch. It was so calm we felt a million miles away from civilization, like nothing could disturb us. Do you call the helicopter for me? like a bird sanctuary and bird flu we have no idea what is that there's a lot of midges yeah Sorry, like a BLB or? Yes. So that 
it's going off. Oh shit. I'm so sorry. Uh, it's just really good to see you, but it's okay. We were thought we were in trouble. Don't wave, you'll confuse him. As the helicopter roared back into life, I wasn't sure which was more embarrassing. The fact I'd accidentally set off my personal location beaker, or that my first assumption was they'd send a thundering helicopter to protect a delicate bird sanctuary. Potato and beans. How is it? Food. It is food. You are correct, I suppose. Before we got going that morning, I had to create a makeshift skeg. I tied my spare paddle either side of my kayak in the hope that for the time being that would keep me going straight. Before the adventure began, I had a sore wrist. The discomfort had been caused by the awkward way my daughter liked to be held when I was rocking her to sleep. Now, with all the paddling, it was incredibly painful. So, in my first few days of trying to become an adventurer, I'd broken my skeg, accidentally called the Coast Guard and now I had an injury caused from holding a baby. Good stuff. Still, it couldn't detract from a beautiful morning on the water. conscious that setting off my emergency beacon would have triggered a call to my emergency contacts. So as soon as I got back into reception, I was aware I had some apologies to make. Hi Dad. Sorry, I'm only just back in reception. I'm so sorry about my PLB went off in my pocket. Over lunch, a breeze picked up into a howling headwind. We had to get back to Malig that evening so James could leave and make it to a party in time. But my homemade skeg was causing so much drag, we were only halfway around the Noidart Peninsula and running out of time. James decided we'd pull up in a remote village for help. After being put off ringing on a doorbell by a pack of dogs, James called around some local numbers and organised a lift. Uh, well, my name's James. We've just actually found the old forge. Got a bit of a... I was fuming. This was my chance to become an adventurer, and now I was having to leave my kayaks behind and hitch a lift so a mate could make a party. It didn't feel very much like an Ernest Shackleton thing to do. Still, it's hard to stay mad at someone who gives you a reason to dry your tent and go to the pub. Day 5 turned into a planning day. I was separated from my kayaks until Jack arrived. So I looked for a route to go hiking by myself, and in the meantime, there was not much to do but stare out the window. If being an adventurer was about leaving your comfort zone, then this might be my most adventurous day yet, because I hate being alone. But still, I was looking forward to the challenge of solo hiking. My drone got caught in the wind and I chased after it. And now I can't find the kit I left behind. I've been looking for like half an hour. This whole place just looks the same. I can't find, I can't find my kit that I left when I sprinted. Every rock I think it's behind, it all looks the same. Oh God, this is a nightmare. Oh, thank God! I can oh God, I can see it! This is such a massive relief. It wasn't all my kit, but it's just... It's stuff, like all the roofs and the map. Oh, thank God. 
Aside from the mental challenge of being alone, there are practical challenges too, like putting up your tent by yourself in a howling gale. Being alone gave me the time and space to contemplate leaving my daughter to go on this adventure. It was of no tangible benefit to her, and it put pressure on my wife to parent alone. It felt pretty selfish. I hoped in years to come she would see this and be inspired to follow her own goals. Soon back in Malig, and there wasn't much to do but wait around for Jack to finally arrive. <laughs> Welcome. Hi, Give us a hug. Oh, How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. I bought you a sandwich and a chocolate bar. Oh, thank you. Perfect. Here we go. Jack and I had to make our way back to the kayaks, first by ferry, then by car. Once there, I had to find a new way to fix my skeg that would still keep me straight, but wouldn't produce the drag. When we finally got going, I experienced that sense of relief all over again. After an afternoon paddling, we made it to Inverie, the largest settlement in Noida, and prepared for the next day's hike. Day 9 was a dreek day, but we still headed out to climb a Munro called Meal Bouye. this way for good after summiting the fog got even thicker 
so I led us down a narrow ridge with nothing but a compass. It was deeply gratifying when we got below the clouds and we were exactly where I thought we were. Cow. I think it's definitely your cow noises that made the difference. Hello. After circumnavigating the cows, we made it back in time to visit the British mainland's most remote pub for a well earned beer. We set off late on day 10 because we had to wait for the tide to be with us to propel us through the narrows. We were headed down Loch Nevis where at the end a bothy awaited us. As we turned the corner, we could see the Monroe we were climbing the next day. It felt epic to view the whole route from our kayak. We were joined in the Bothy by some fellow hikers. We exchanged stories and some music too. We were headed for two Monroe peaks, Garb Kiof Moor and Skarnakich, and with a clear day finally for our hiking, there was promise of views from the summit. It's a smile, Jack. Huh? Give us a smile. One row of two today, and we are rewarded with an epic view. Wow, what a beautiful country storm it is. Another one row, and another view for our troubles. So glad we came. Once again, no views from the summit. But below the clouds there were stunning views of Loch Nevis.
On the morning of day 12, we had to make it out of Loch Nevis to Malig, where I hoped my replacement skeg had arrived by post. As we paddled, we passed the famous adventurer Tom McLean's house. He was the first person to row west to east across the Atlantic solo. His house is marked by the enormous whale that he built and sailed around the UK. We pulled into Malig and thankfully my replacement skeg had arrived. I decided to push on and fix it that evening. My makeshift skeg had got me this far so would probably last until evening. This turned out to immediately be a mistaken assumption. As soon as we left harbour, my homemade skeg broke. I had to come up with an even more rudimentary piece of gear while standing knee deep in choppy waves. As grand as the sea locks were, it felt good to be back out on the open ocean, among the waves and the shore. This is where a sea cart was supposed to be. It's working! On this remote beach, we have found a message in a bottle. Do you want to open it, Jack? I wonder what it reads. It reads, Hi, my name is Mir Cullingford. I come from Low, Stro Low Stoft, Suffolk. I'm nearly eight years old. If you find this, you could write to me. Isn't that nice? That's very nice. We will be writing to her. And telling her of all the adventures that led us to this point. Exactly. The penultimate day was glorious and clear. Soon after we departed, we pulled up on shore again to check out an unfortunate tuna. Without far to go and hours to kill, we spent the afternoon playing in the rocks and with the seals, and it was a truly magnificent experience. Left without a trace Off to another place Did you think I'd find you there on the other side? So I opened up your grave To see what in there lay Over broken bones I felt you wild Won't you carry me? I will carry I will carry you Won't you carry me? The sea gave up your 
your song The sun stayed cold too long Did you think I'd leave you there with the turning tide? So you built up a stony wall You lay down without a cause Under frozen stars I watched you slide We cast off from shore one final time, and as Jack and I played in the surf and in the shore, I began to wonder, am I an adventurer yet? I was less sure than ever what it meant to be an adventurer. I'd made a lot of mistakes, but I'd overcome them all, either through grit, ingenuity, adaptability, or at the very least, humour. Above all, I'd gone out into the wilderness under my own power, I'd been comfortable enough not just to survive, but to actually enjoy myself. And that was good enough for me. Mm-hmm.